How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another review. Today we're going to be looking at this 2023 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat. Now before I even get into today's review, I do have to give a quick shout out to Sansone Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram on Route 1 North in Avenel, New Jersey. I'll leave their website linked down in the description below. Please feel free to check them out if you're in the market for any of those brands, new or used. They have a ton of different inventory. Now this new Durango Hellcat is actually finished off in the white knuckle clear coat for the exterior paint. It's one of the 11 different options for this year for the model. And the interior, as you guys could tell, is the red and black interior. There's only one interior option if you're getting a Hellcat Durango, and that's this. And honestly, I really, really do love it. Everything from like the red seat belts, which is not that really important, but the red leather on the seats all the way back, like through the three rows of seating in this thing is very, very nice. And also I do really like the kind of forged carbon accents that you get in the center console here, as well as on the door cards. I did in the past, uh, like when I first started my channel, actually review a 2016 Hellcat Charger and the interior as well as the infotainment system, which we'll get to in a bit, everything is a lot more updated and better just in this 2023 model. Now I know that's kind of obvious, but you do have the 10.1 inch infotainment system with all the different kind of Hellcat driving modes that you'd see in any other model that has this very, very good Hellcat drivetrain. And it even has like a performance page where you can track your like zero to 60 time, your launch reaction, and I think like the overall G-force and everything, there's so many different things that come with it. And on top of that, you do have the apps and kind of your climate control, your, your navigation, your phone connectivity, all the basic things that you would expect in like a modern Durango or a modern SUV. And going back to the drivetrain now, so if you don't know, it does have the 6.2 liter Hemi two valve per cylinder V8 with its infamous 2.4 liter twin screw supercharger on the top with its kind of like waffle design that has now been iconic ever since the Hellcat has kind of been around in the early 2010s. However, this new 2023 Durango Hellcat actually technically makes 710 horsepower versus the base like 707 that you'd think a Hellcat would make from factory and it makes that at 6100 RPMs and it also does make 645 foot-pounds of torque at 4300 RPMs. You still do have the same 8-speed auto uh, transmission and I do have to say although I have complained plenty of times in the past about steering wheel mounted paddle shifters versus column mounted paddle shifters. I do really like the paddle shifters that are on this steering wheel. You do have the leather uh, steering wheel. I love the design. I love the bolsters on the side. And I do really like the paddle shifters. They're kind of pushed out a bit, which makes them a lot easier to use while driving. Now looking more of the history of the overall Hellcat drivetrain in the different models and Mopars lineup, the Trackhawk and Hellcat Chargers slash Challengers have been around for a while, but this Durango Hellcat actually did come out for the 2021 model year. And I believe they actually skipped over the 2022 model year. And then obviously the 2023 and now the 2024 is going to be its last year. So there's going to be a very limited run of these Durango Hellcats. And I honestly really, really love the idea of putting a Hellcat drivetrain in a Durango. Dodge is awesome for this. And even looking back in my channel and just thinking now, I do remember making a video when Dodge initially released this new uh, Durango Hellcat and said that they would be selling this. Ever since then, I've really always been a fan of this idea of putting you know, a Hellcat drivetrain in the Durango. I think it's awesome. Now, definitely one negative of this Durango versus like the smaller size Trackhawk, it does weigh 5,575 pounds, which is definitely heavier than the Trackhawk, obviously because of its size. You know, this one is definitely much more bigger than the Trackhawk, which still makes the Trackhawk the faster out of the two Mopar or Stellantis uh, models sporting this iconic Hellcat engine. I still do think this Hellcat Durango is really cool though because it's a proper like family hauler that could definitely get the kids back and forth to school or soccer practice a lot faster than mostly everything you would normally see in an elementary rec sports parking lot. And speaking of its practicality and daily drivability, in case you're wondering, 
The fuel economy numbers are also not great as well. You get around 12 miles per gallon during city driving and 17 miles per gallon during highway driving for a combined average of 13 miles per gallon. However, I mean, it's really not bad if you're just kind of cruising, but now that we're on the highway here, I'm gonna just give it one little hit. And it feels so awesome. And another little like detail too, like while driving it, the cabin noise that you can tell is very quiet when you're at lower RPMs or just cruising. But when you wanna stop on it and when you just wanna burn money and go through gas, it gets so loud in the cabin and you can hear the supercharger whine, you can hear that loud exhaust. Also, I love the fact that the exhaust, exhaust tips are actually cut at an angle to match that rear bumper. I think it fits very well and flows seamlessly. And on this Hellcat Durango, you do have the factory 20 by 10 inch factory wheels, which do fit the 295 tires that are on it. Now it's a, it's not a staggered setup from factory or anything. It's there's 295s all the way around. So it really does hook, especially from a roll. And if you ever didn't want to launch this, and I'm not launching this particular one because when I took it out, it had 13 miles on the odometer. So it's basically brand freaking new and they are trying to sell this. But in case you did want to launch it, there is a launch button with the SRT button. You can turn traction control off and that is all located kind of underneath the infotainment system as well. And if you honestly are worried about the daily drivability and practicality of this thing, I mean, hey, at the very least, it does have a heated steering wheel and it does have heated and cooled seats, which right now it's pretty hot out and I am loving the cooled seats right now. Overall though, I know I talked about it before, but I love this vehicle and I love this concept so much along with the new Ram TRX because it's essentially Mopar's figurative middle finger to the different laws that have pushed a lot of manufacturers to make very basic four cylinder turbo crossovers or SUVs in the modern auto industry. And it's clearly a part of the many models that have basically been the last send off of the internal combustion engine from this brand in particular. I know it's unfortunate that, you know, they're discontinuing the internal combustion engine for the Chargers and Challengers. Actually, I believe the Charger, or no, the Challengers are being discontinued entirely. The Charger is going to, I guess, take the form of that new Daytona, like that EV Daytona Charger concept. I don't know. I saw it at the New York Auto Show and I saw the same clips that I'm sure all of you guys saw. I don't really like it. I don't I don't like the idea of an electric muscle car. That's to me that's not what a muscle car should be. If anything, this Durango Hellcat is more of a muscle car in my opinion than that thing because I just I don't really like it at all. But yeah, this thing is plenty fun if you want to step on it. But at the end of the day, it's still very 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 easy to drive and you have all of the different features that you would think would be in a you know new modern SUV but anyways that's pretty much just gonna wrap up today's video again I gotta thank Sansone so much for letting me take this thing out today I'll leave their website down linked in the description below definitely be sure to check them out so far with the different dealerships and Sansone Auto Mall that I've worked with all of the people have been great all the managers salespeople everyone who's helped me out has been awesome and if you stuck around to the end of this video definitely feel free to leave a like and subscribe it helps me out a ton as a smaller car channel here on YouTube I do reviews pretty much every single week so if you're interested in this sort of content that comes out all the time I do POV driving videos and I'm gonna release one as soon as this review comes out on this a new Durango Hellcat. But that's pretty much just gonna be it for me today, guys. Like always, I hope you all have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.